Good morning. All right. We uh, got a couple of our technical glitches, hopefully ironed out. We'll see. It's technology. We expect it to fail, and that's okay. Um, and uh, the technology is just, it, it simply is a supplement to what God is doing through our gathering and, and us being together. So let's get ready. Let's take a moment. Uh, let's enter into just a, a moment of prayer as we get ready to worship together. So let's all stand as, uh, as we get started today. God, you are so good to us. We receive grace and mercy that is undeserved, uh, love that uh, we, we did nothing to, to earn and that we can't get anywhere else. Uh, it comes from you. And Jesus, there is a reason for us to sing today, and that is because you are good and holy and because you call us your children and you give us an inheritance that we could never have earned on our own, and that is eternity with you. God, that is so exciting. And I pray today that as we worship, as we sing out, as we teach from your word, as we share in communion together, as we just gather together in celebration, uh, God, I pray that you would uh, would be, bring transformation to our hearts, and God, that you would be uh, celebrated by the depths of each of our beings. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together. Triumph in your name, Jesus. 
Jesus, the great commander, you conquered death forever. In victory you reign, we triumph in your name. Our God, almighty warrior, you're a consuming
God, we are grateful to be able to worship you, to be able to sing out to you. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to see that, uh, that you are the creator, that you are the, the, the finisher, you are eternal. And God, when we align ourselves with your word and with your heart, then we get to experience eternity with you. God, you are the ancient of days and you are the one who holds the future in your hands. And so God, uh, help us to align ourselves with you today. In your name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, look around real quickly. If there's someone uh, uh, that you've not met before, just say a quick hi. Um, if you're single and looking, wink. And, uh, you know, it's... I, 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 I'm already, yeah, yeah. Listen, we, we got we to gotta keep trying because there's no better place to, uh, to find uh, a spouse than someone who loves Jesus like you. Anyways, we're glad to, uh, to have you here with us today. And uh, if you are new, we want to encourage you to shoot us a real quick text message. Um, let us know that you're here. And uh, so what you do is just send the keyword, J-R-N-Y, those four letters, uh, to the number 97,000, and that adds you to our text list, allows us to uh, keep you informed uh, as to what's happening, what's going on, and, uh, and then it also gives you a chance uh, to send us messages back and let us know if you've got questions about activities, events, uh, if you've got prayer requests, things like that, um, and so we want to encourage you, just make sure you, uh, you know, scan the QR code or, or send that text uh, at, at some point today, and, uh, and we'll make sure we keep you posted on everything that's happening happening. Um, another way to know and to follow uh, up with activities, events, groups, uh, all of those things uh, is through the Church Center app, and so that's something that we use. Um, you can download the Church Center app on, on your mobile device, iPads, uh, and then uh, just set Journey as, as your home church, and you'll get all of our updates. You'll find small groups, be able to register for events and activities, and there's a couple of really cool and really exciting things that are coming up uh, in, in the next few uh, the, the next few weeks, actually, so uh, make sure you keep an eye out on that. Uh, just a couple of quick dates to throw out there, and I hope I'm going to get all the dates right. Um, coming up August 28th, we're doing a, a big 10-year celebration for our church family, and that's going to be exciting, so uh, we want you to, uh, to be prepared for that. So the evening of Sunday, August 28th, we're going to be doing that. Uh, July 27th through the 29th, we are doing a kids' uh, art camp camp is basically what it's going to be in, in creative camp, uh, so music, art, creativity, all of that uh, in, uh, in one of the local parks, and uh, so it's Lafayette Park, I believe, is where that one's going to be at, and so uh, we're looking for both volunteers to kind of be uh, team counselors and group counselors just to kind of travel with the kids from station to station, looking for volunteers in each of the stations, and uh, so this is a collaborative effort by multiple churches here in the city, and so if you want to be in involved in the volunteer process of that, just go to fallriver.church and you'll see a, a, a link there that, that you can use to, uh, to register as a volunteer. And then next week, we're going to be opening up registration for kids to start, reg uh, for, to, for kids to start um, being uh, signed up and registered for that as well. So these are some really cool things that are coming. Um, keep an eye on the Church Center app. All the rest of the details of everything that we have going on is all found uh, right inside there. Um, so... Let's get ready to get into, uh, into our teaching. Uh, by the way, in, uh, in our second service today, uh, we'll be doing a dedication for, for, for Avery uh, Batello. So we just wanted to, uh, uh, to let you guys know, and at the end of our service here, we'll pray over them, even though they, uh, they're not going to be here yet for that. But that'll be in, in the second service today. Uh, but uh, let's get into our teaching, spend time in God's Word if you have your Bible with you, the physical Bible, take it, open it up to Matthew chapter 5. If you have your digital Bible, um, pop that up uh, on, on your phone. Uh, we have been teaching through um, through the, uh, the, the, the Sermon on the Mount that we find in uh, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, this is where Jesus takes his disciples 
well, actually, let's clarify. Jesus heads up the mountain and sits down. His disciples come to him, and they sit before him ready for a teaching. And, uh, and so uh, here you have this audience, and this audience is important for us to note um, because it is Jesus' followers, his disciples, it's mostly men uh, from Jewish backgrounds, and most of them are going to be younger guys. Uh, and that's what would happen b- with a teacher and his disciples. The teacher would often be uh, you know, a little bit older and wiser. And we know Jesus was wise in scriptures because uh, it, scripture tells us even at the age of 12, when he was in the temple and he was conversing with the, re- re- with the religious leaders that were there, they were astounded at his wisdom and his knowledge and his insight. And so he taught with an authority and had an understanding um, that was well beyond beyond his years, even as a child, and that's because he was God incarnate. And so, uh, so here we have Jesus teaching these disciples, most of them would have been, uh, actually almost all of them would have been younger than him, uh, his 12 disciples that we know as the apostles, as well as uh, a, a group of others would likely have been following with him. So Jesus, as he's teaching, it is this group of guys, and, uh, and so uh, he, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, He warns them, and he says this, I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And here he is, as he's talking to those who are with him, He's trying to get them to see that, uh, that, that, that this is the summary, this is, this is the thesis of, of, of where he's going for the next, uh, you know, several, uh, well, the, the next 20 minutes of his teaching to his disciples. This is what he's trying to get them to understand, is you have to live with a different kind of righteousness, not something that's just outward, not something that, that's just we put on the mask, we put on the face, we pretend that we are righteous, but we still have hard, cold hearts deep inside side, and he tells them that your righteousness must be better than that facade. It must be deep and internal. And so in these next six sections of Jesus' teaching through chapter five, uh, he illustrates um, that in order to belong to his kingdom and to live in the kingdom, it takes more than an external conformity to the Jewish standards uh, and the religious standards, but it's all about this, this heart formation. It has to go deeper than just simply what people see. And he hits six practical issues within personal relationships uh, right here in chapter five. And, uh, and as he does this, so far we've already covered the anger and murder, the lust and adultery, um, and then today we're gonna hit the next two of divorce or marriage vows and then spiritual oaths or spiritual vows as well. We're gonna hit both of those as we dive into our teaching today. Uh, but here, I want you to take a listen to, uh, to, to, to Jesus' words, uh, and these come right out of the Bible app. If you have the Bible app on your phone, um, the YouVersion Bible app, you can uh, listen to Scripture this way as well. Uh, so here, I want you to go ahead and take a listen to Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 through 37. the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce but I say that a man who divorces his wife unless she has been unfaithful causes her to commit adultery and anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery you have also heard that our ancestors were told you must not break your vows you must carry out the vows you make to the Lord but I say do not make any vows Do not say, by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say, by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say, by Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say, by my head, but you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple, yes I will, or no I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. So here we are diving into Jesus' teaching on the kingdom of heaven, and it is an upside-down understanding compared to what has previously been taught. See, 
Jesus is, is saying, and he uses this phrase a couple times in this passage that we're going to, to look at today. He says, you've heard it said, and then he quotes an old statement, uh, whether it is biblical or whether it is uh, in, in, in part of this, we're going to learn about the Mishnah a, a, a little bit, but, but, but Jesus teaches one of these old statements, you've heard it said, and then he clarifies it with, but I say to you, and he's, what he's doing is he's not saying that this old statement doesn't matter, this previous law, this previous commandment doesn't matter. He's saying, you know, you've misunderstood it. This has been mistaught to you over time, and I'm bringing clarity to this. And, uh, and, and as, as we look at this, I, I, I want to I, I ask you, how many of you guys remember as, as kids some of these, these statements we used to, uh, we used to say, um, uh, I swear on my mother's grave, anyone ever use that one as a kid, right? And your mom was not dead, right? And you're like, <laughs> there's, there's a lot uh, that's being implied by using, that, uh, by, by using those statements when your mother's still living, right? Um, and uh, my, my daughter uses some, you know, some of those, you know, don't step on a crack or you'll break your mama's back, right? You know, I know that the next step for her is she's going to start swearing on her mom's grave, right, when she steps on the crack. Um, and uh, and so, so as, as we look at these, th- these old statements that we've heard and these old things that, that, that we hold to, uh, still today, I swear on XYZ is used by us. You know, we, we use this statement a lot. And, and Jesus, he addresses these, these issues because he, what he wants to happen for us is he wants us to realize that our word needs to be our word. He wants us to become like our creator. This is important for us to get today. Your word should be your word because when you become like your creator and your word being your word, you become trustworthy. And then people can lean in to you and trust in you and they can rely on you and and you become a solid foundation for fellow Christians for people who do not yet believe and follow Jesus because they know this is someone who I can rely on and who I can trust. And so what what Jesus is wanting us to understand is the importance and the value of our words. Do you understand the value of your words? They matter. As parents, they matter. My kids ask me all the time, hey, dad, can we, you know, go to the jump park today? I'm not making any promises because I cannot guarantee that we're going to be able to do that, right? That's what I always tell my kids. Um, and, uh, and, and even when we plan to do things, I often say, we're going to try to do this today as long as things work out, right? And that includes attitudes, that includes emergencies, that includes, you know, all, everything else, you know, involved. We're going to try to do this. This is our goal. This is what we want to do today. So make sure that you're doing your part to help see that that happen as well. And so, so, so we're careful as parents to make sure that we don't make these promises all the time that we're not going to keep all the time um, because my kids hold me to it. They hold us to it. In fact, a few months ago, so we, we did a family podcast, and, and we've, my, my wife and I, we've slacked on recording uh, new podcasts recently. Part of that's because of a deck project that I swore would only take 10 to 15 days, right? And now here we are on four to five weeks, um, and that's because of things, some that were beyond my control and others that were just like, I'm demotivated. I don't have the energy. I'm not working on it today, right? So some of them are under my control. But, 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 but here we are. You know, it, it's been a while since we've recorded any of these podcasts. But in one of our recordings, um, Sadie, my four-year-old, she looked at, at Sarah and I, and she said, because her brothers have little lamps that are mounted to the wall next to their beds that have a little gooseneck light, and it's a, a flip switch that they can turn on and off, to read in their beds at, at, at night. And so she asked Sarah and, and I, she said, um, can, can you guys get me a light like the boys have? And um, Sarah promised and said, yes, yes, we will. Um, it's been eight weeks since that <laughs> promise. 
and Sarah's words were, yes, we will order one tomorrow. We haven't ordered it yet, right? And I'm like, I feel terrible as a parent because I feel like I'm letting my kids down and being able to trust in us and believe in us. Fortunately, right now, it's out of sight, out of mind for Sadie, so I should be ordering it today and expecting to install it Wednesday after Amazon drops it off, right? And, uh, and that way, we, we, we fulfill the promise. But we need to understand that our words matter, whether it's to our children to our coworkers, to our, our spouses, our other family, our neighbors, our words matter. And our words are part of our testimony. People will, will learn whether or not we are a person that is trustworthy on those small conversations. And those small conversations and our trustworthiness and those little things will affect how people view us when they find out that we follow Jesus as well. As a parent, let me see how many, do we have any little, little kids in here? No? Okay. All right. Um, as a parent, okay, cover, cover the ears, cover, cover the ears. As a parent, we've always told our kids that Santa and the tooth fairy and all of those things, they don't exist, right? And we've, we, we've always told our kids that from a young age, and it's, it's terrible because my kid was the one who walked into preschool telling the other kids when they were saying, what, what did you ask for Santa for Christmas? And he's like, nothing. Santa's not real, right? And that was just, it was that matter of fact at the age of four. Our kids know, and they love the stories of, of Santa and Christmas and all of this stuff and the Easter bunny. And, and we play with this stuff, and it's fun, but they understand it as being just as real as the stories of Curious George and these other cartoon characters and stories. Because what we want to make sure is that when they turn 15, 16, 17 years old, and they start critically thinking, they're not going, okay, if Santa and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy and all of these things are fable, is Jesus fable too? Can I trust what mom and dad said about Jesus? And so we've always been cautious to make sure that our words are trustworthy with our kids and that we're real and that we're genuine. Why can't we do that? Well, listen, the money is just not there to do this. Well, I'm not going to give you that because you don't need a cell phone at the age of eight, right? It's just unnecessary, right? I'm not going to feed him a line that says, we'll talk about it and we'll think about it for your birthday. or No, 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 no. You're not getting that until you're 18 and you can pay for it yourself, kid, right? And then... My 11-year-old tells me he wants to start a business so he can buy his own stuff, and I'm going, shoot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but as we look at this, we need to understand our words need to, be, our, need to be true and trustworthy like our creator. Jesus starts on the idea of marriage vows. And he tells us on, on marriage vows, he basically says, keep your word. Keep your vows. Keep your commitments. Let's read real quickly. He says, you've heard it said, right? The law uh, it tells you a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife unless she has been unfaithful causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. Now, there's much more to this, and we're not going to have a full, you know, a, a, a full dissertation right now on divorce and what's permitted and where it's allowed and where it's not and all of the nuances of that. We're not going to do that right now. But we are going to look at this from the heart perspective, and that is, is your heart in it to hold to your vows? Because what, what Jesus is talking about is, is the vows of and the commitments of, remember, the religious leaders, He's addressing the, 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 the soft uh, you know, word and, 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 and commitment to the gospel and to the message of, of in, in love and in heart of God. He, he's addressing that issue that you find in the religious leaders. The religious leaders who, what they would do is they would find claims that they could bring against a spouse because they thought the grass would be greener on the other side of the fence, and then they would leave that spouse under false accusations and then go find 
find a new one, hoping that, 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 that this would be a, a much better experience for them, and then they'd be dis- disappointed and let down, and they'd continue trying to do this again and again and again. And this kind of stuff is what was happening inside that day. And Jesus was saying, see, your heart's not in it. Your heart, your word is not your word. You're not holding to your vows. You're not a trustworthy person. And there's a deeper heart issue that is going on here. And so as Jesus touches on this, one of the things he says later on in his teachings in Matthew, Matthew chapter 19, uh, the religious leaders specifically address him with a question about divorce. And they say, but Moses permits it. And Jesus says this, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts. But it was not really what God had originally intended. It's not what God intended. He wanted us to be like him, where our word is our word, our commitment is our commitment, and we're going to see through as long as we possibly can. We're going to do our part to love well, to commit well, to hold up to our vows. Now, Jesus then steps on to uh, to the next part in dealing with personal vows. This isn't just the, the marriage vows now. This is everything that we say. And he basically tells us this one simple thing. I, how many of us have heard this before? Tell the truth. Anyone? Anyone ever hear that, that statement before in life? Yeah. Yeah. Tell the truth. Don't lie. Just tell the truth. Let your word be your word. Jesus goes, you've, heard, you've also heard that our ancestors were told you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. Now here, Jesus specifically is addressing spiritual vows that are being made, right? Spiritual commitments. And as you look at these spiritual commitments uh, you know, in service to the Lord, people who are, are being dedicated to ministry, committing themselves to, to the ministry, uh, and then turning their back on it, Jesus is saying, follow through. And he says, but I say, do not make any vows like this. Do not say by heaven, because heaven is is God's throne. Do not say by the earth because the earth is his footstool and do not say by Jerusalem for this uh, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. To to them Jerusalem would have been like committing on the name of the nation, uh, the the people of Israel as a whole. And so Jesus is saying don't swear by these things. Don't even say by my own head because you have no power to change your hair from white or gray to black. Just say a simple yes or a no. Let your word be your word. True and trustworthy. I'll tell you, in our society, in our culture right now, we are surrounded by people who flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop on issues in order to appease people around them. And this, this is a problem. This happens in our workplaces with, with, with supervisors who are trying to look good to, uh, to, to their bosses. And then they, 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 they come down and, 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 and attack you. And you're like, wait a second. This just feels so backwards and double standard-ish. What is going on here? We see this in, 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 our, in our families. Uh, how many of you have ever had uh, your parents? You ever had a kid try to turn parent against parent? Right? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, I had one of those recently, um, and uh, and and that child's got a a punishment that they were like, I'm never doing that again. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you see, we 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 see this all over, all over the place. It's in our homes. It's in our workplaces. It's in our government. It's all around the world. It's in media. People who their word is not their word. They are not trustworthy. And they simply look out for self, which tells us that there is an issue there of self-preservation, which is a lack of love. Because what is love? Jesus tells us that there is no greater form of love than for someone to lay down their life for someone else. So if you live in a place of pure self-preservation, you live in selfishness and not in love. 
And so to be constantly flipping our word over and over and over in order to have self-preservation means that we're living in selfish pride, self-preservation. We're not living with the love of God. I want to challenge you. You know, those of you who are getting married soon, um, your vows, let them be your word true and trustworthy. Those who have already been married, you're in the throes of marriage. Maybe it's not going well or as well as you had hoped. Welcome to marriage. Okay, first off, let me just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that out there. When you take two people who have an opinion and you put them in a room and you ask them to do one task and come up with an idea on how to do this, there's going to be a point of disagreement, Right? Eventually, eventually, one will secede, and that may involve actually walking away from the situation, right? But, but this, the, 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 this is interpersonal relationships, and we have to understand that when we make vows and when we make commitments and when we say, I do, and when we say yes, we should do everything inside of us to uphold those vows, now, I said that we were not going to do a full uh, dissertation here on marriage and divorce, and we're not because we don't have time for that in this teaching. But if you've tapped out and you said, I'm, I'm done, there's, th- there is room at Jesus' feet for you just to kneel down before him and say, hey, I, I repent, God that I didn't hold to my word and I didn't hold to my vows. Give me forgiveness and give me strength from this point forward to be able to stand strong as a person who is true and trustworthy with my words. Maybe you're in a place of weakness and you're ready to tap out. Ask God to renew your strength to be a person of your word. Maybe you've messed up your reputation in the workplace as a person who is untrustworthy. Maybe you need to go to your supervisors and say, hey, listen, I just want to clear a few things. And I've done some soul searching, and I've done some, some self-evaluation, and I realize that maybe I haven't been the most trustworthy employee, and I want to apologize for that, and I just want to make some things right here. See, we, we have to take action that says and that proves and that shows that we want to move forward and make changes and transitions inside of our life. And I'll tell you this, when people see someone who can come to them with honesty, humility, and with sincerity, then they're going to see someone that is reliable, trustworthy, and teachable. This is important for, for, for all of us because our word matters, not for our sake, For the sake of Jesus, for his sake, our words matter. Our words must be true and trustworthy because when people find out that we are are Jesus followers, that, that we believe in what scripture says, that we are claiming to, to be Christians. There's a lot of Christians that have given Jesus and given scripture and given the Bible and given God a bad name through history. We need to be someone who helps to curb that. And that, and that starts by us being people who are like our creator, trustworthy individuals. As we go into, um, uh, in, in, into our work week, well, no, not, how, many of you, how many of you are working tomorrow? Tomorrow's 4th of, 4th of July. I will be praying for you guys who are working tomorrow. Um, but as you go into work this week, ask yourself, am I a person who has proven myself to be trustworthy? Am I a person who has let others down? Has my word been, has my yes been my yes and my no been my no? Or have I flip-flopped? And you need to ask yourself, do I need to make things right with my employees, with my employers, with supervisors, with coworkers? Do I need to go and make some of these things right? Because... God wants us 
to be good representatives of him. And this includes in our marriages. See, our marriages, Jesus tells us, uh, or, or, or Paul tells us through Scripture, our marriages are a picture of the sacrifice and love that God has for his church. Jesus is, you know, he, he, he's symbolically this groom. The church, us, are symbolically this bride, and he sacrificially commits himself to the church to ensure that we are the best that we can possibly be. And he asks us to sacrificially commit to him as the groom, if you will. And this image, this picture of marriage and commitment that we see in Scripture is so strong. And Jesus, he's given his all to us, and he's committed, and his word is his word, and he is true and trustworthy. Are you, as a member of his church, true and trustworthy back to him. Is your word your word? Are you fully, truly committed? Or do we swear on these strange things? I swear on my mother's grave. I swear on, uh, on, on this. I swear on that. I, I, I swear to God. How many of you have found yourself saying that one? Be careful with that one. That is a dangerous dangerous phrase. Instead, let your yes be yes, let your no be no, and let your character be the testimony of your trustworthiness. I'm going to ask our worship team to come. We're going to close our time together in communion. Uh, And communion is this constant reminder of what Jesus has done for us. It's this opportunity for us to do some self-searching, some self-evaluation, and to sincerely respond to what God is calling us to in Scripture. And so today, as you receive communion, I want you to ask yourself, have I been trustworthy in the gospel that has been given to me, the gospel that has been lived out for me? Have I been trustworthy in my response to God, because he's been faithful to us. He's been trustworthy for, for, for us. His word has been his word. It is true, and it is unchanging. Jesus has committed himself to us. He gave his life as a sacrifice so that we could have salvation. And he, he, he said he would do this. This was prophesied long before he was born. Long before uh, the the prophets had written things down, he had already committed himself to bringing salvation to us. Revelation tells us that at the very creation of the world, the lamb was slain. When Jesus spoke creation into existence, he spoke his sacrifice into existence for us. When when he came to the earth, he said that he was here to finish the work. He was here to give himself for us. And he did that through the pain, through the torment, through the suffering. He committed himself. His yes was his yes. And what he's asking us to do is to respond to him and when he says, you know, I, I've, I've given my life to you. I've given salvation to you. It's offered to you. I'm calling you to respond to salvation. When he puts that in front of us, he's asking us, will you receive and accept the love and salvation that I'm offering you? And if our response to him is yes, then he says, then I want you to live as though I've given that to you and represent me well so others can experience the same love and the same peace and the same joy and the same transformation. This is what Jesus has done for us. Let our yes be yes. Let our no be no. Make it that simple, that easy. Be like your creator, a trustworthy person who stands in salvation. Let's all stand together. We're going to receive communion. It is this symbolic reminder of Jesus physically coming into creation, giving his body uh, to be broken for us, to be crucified on the cross. 
the juice it represents, his blood that was shed for us. I'm going to pray over the communion elements and and, uh, this opportunity for us to engage in communion. If you did not grab the cups that have the juice and the, and, and the, the bread inside of it, they're inside the lobby right over there. Just grab that as we sing this song and receive communion with whoever you came to worship with or, or whoever may be around you. But let's take a moment and let's pray. Jesus, we are thankful for salvation because you give us an opportunity at a new life that we can't find on our own. That's by putting our faith in you, Jesus, putting our trust in you, by believing that what you did on the cross brought salvation to us, and then living in response to that. God, help us to really, truly own and live in the salvation that is available. God, help us to commit to you Help us to commit to our word. Help us to be good representatives of you with our words. Jesus, right now, as we receive uh, communion together, as we eat this bread that reminds us of you physically coming into creation and your body being broken, as we drink this juice, it, it reminds us of your blood that was shed for us. It covers over our sins. Is, uh, is what scripture tells us. And in, in, in Old Testament practices, we saw the sacrifice that was necessary and the shedding of blood to cover over sins. Jesus, that's what you were doing. And Lord, I pray today that as we receive communion together, you'd help us to be encouraged to know that we can make transitions and changes in our life. We can repent. We can come to you. We can ask you for forgiveness for where we haven't held up to our word, where we haven't been trustworthy. God, this is a chance for us to turn a new leaf, a new, a new page in, in our life. God, we, we, we can change and see transformation happen. So God, please be honored. And in this moment of worship, as we receive uh, communion together, and as we close in this song together, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive communion, and let's sing together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you and only there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show Show 
I want to encourage you, if you have not put your trust and your faith in Jesus, listen, people are going to let you down. As a human pastor, I will let you down. Your spouse will let you down. Your coworkers will let you down. But Jesus is that foundation that we can trust. His word is his word. It is true. It is trustworthy. Lean on him. Set him as the center of your life. Um, in our next service, we're going to be uh, dedicating uh, Avery Patello. We're going to pray uh, real, real quickly. Uh, Andrew's daughter, we're going to pray uh, over her. Also, um, a, an awesome praise report. Ray Rios is here with us. He's uh, uh, I, I got to serve with him. He was a worship pastor in one of the churches we were involved in. Incredible heart, incredible man. He suffered uh, and struggled with a, a heart attack um, earlier in the year. And so we had a chance as a church to just reach out some support him, uplift his family. So he's here. He's healthy. I know you're on the road, road to recovery. So God is so good. Glad to see you. Let's just praise God right now. There's so much happening. God is doing so much in so many lives. He's trustworthy. Put your faith in him. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this time to gather together today. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that we can always trust in you. Jesus, you gave this illustration that we have our choice of building the foundation of our life on either sinking shifty sand or we can place it on a solid rock. And God, you are that rock. Help us to trust your word. Help us to live uh, trustworthy like you are to the world that is around us. God, that will help them to also put their faith and their trust and the rock of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're thankful for this time together. Be blessed and be honored as we get to dedicate to Avery in our next service, Lord. I pray your favor and your blessing over uh, Andrew and Marissa and, uh, and, and their family. Jesus, we're just glad to be able to do life together as a church family. In your name, amen, amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.